Fletcher and Manson Curves. Hi, my name is Ali Valdez and today we're going to talk about the Fletcher and Manson Curves and how important they are for the mixing process. Back in 1933, two researchers at Bell Labs, Harvey Fletcher and W.A. Manson, conducted one of the most significant experiments in psychoacoustics. Their experiment was based on a series of tests taken by a group of listeners. Each test involved playing a test frequency followed by a reference tone of 1 kHz. The listeners simply had to choose which of the two was louder. Successive tests involved either different test frequency or different levels. Essentially, what Fletcher and Monson tried to conclude is how louder or softer different frequencies had to be in order to be perceived as loud as 1 kHz. A similar experiment was conducted after two decades by Robinson and Datsun, resulting in the robinson datsun counters. The formal name for the outcome of these studies is termed equal loudness counters. To give one example how this graph is read, we can follow the 20 curve to see that if 1 kHz is played at 20 dB SPL, 100 Hz would need to be played at 50 dB SPL in order to appear equally loud, a 30 dB difference which is by no means marginal. The graph also teaches perception has a bump around 3.5 kHz, a fact contributed to the resonance frequency of our ear canal. Some claim that it is not by chance that within this bump falls the center frequency of baby's cry. One important thing that the equal loudness counters teach us is that we are more sensitive to mid frequencies. Most importantly though, it is evident that at louder levels our frequency perception becomes more even, in extremely general terms. We associate lows with power and highs with definition, clarity and spark. So it is only natural that loud levels make music more appealing, louder perceived better. This phenomenon explains the ever-rising level syndrome that many experience while mixing. Once levels go up, it is not fun bringing them down. The fact our frequency perception alters with relation to levels is a fundamental mixing issue. How are we supposed to craft a balanced mix if its frequency content varies with level? At what level should we mix? And what will happen when the listener listens at different levels? The answer is this. We check our mix at different levels and try to make it as level-proof as possible. We know what to expect as we listen at softer levels, less highs and lows. It is possible to equalize the different instruments, so even when the highs and lows are softened, the overall instrument balance hardly changes. For example, if the kick's presence is based solely on low frequencies, it will be heard less at quiet levels, if at all. If we ensure that the kick is also present on the high mids, it will be heard much better at quiet levels. Many believe that the mids, which vary little with level, are the key for balanced mix, and if the lows and highs are crafted as an extension to the mids, a mix will exhibit more stable balance at different levels. Also, many agree that if a mix sounds good when played quietly, it is likely to sound good when played loud. The opposite is not always true. Another point worth remembering is that we can sometimes guess the rough level at which the mix is likely to be played. For example, dance music is likely to be played louder than ambient. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. And use that level as the main reference while mixing. I hope you find this information useful. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any question, please leave it in the comments. Bye.